dream you ride. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 97 of Build That House with me, Jim. I'm glad you're back. Today, I've got a little bit of a hiatus off the roof trusses. Let me, uh, let me express that I was calling the trusses rafters several times in the prior videos. Is my mistake. Rafters are kind of like uh, what you can build from raw materials at the lumber yard and trusses are what we have here and they're manufactured roof sections that come all pre-built and uh, so the difference between trusses and rafters there I uh, just wanted to clarify luckily no one uh, corrected me but uh, anyway so until we get to back to that on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday when this uh, latest rain thing goes through uh, I'm going to continue to work on the footings and um, we'll take a quick look at what I'm doing there and show you my progress this afternoon. So each one of these uh, form boxes is made out of eight uh, two by sixes and uh, cut to the specific dimensions. This one being a 30, this one being a 36. I did find some scrap two by six bits and bobs around and you know, lumber's not cheap, so what I'm going to do is take all that apart and cut all those 2 by 6s to size and um, get myself another free box form out of it. So, uh, let's do it. I love this part of her I love this part of house building because uh, this is a part where most people are like, I'd like to have a new house, but spending my Saturday afternoon in a hole <laughs> shoveling dirt. I don't know, not that much, I guess. Okay, so I ran a string. You can see this mark here on the wall. That's the reference mark. A little upside down K or sideways K or backwards K. So I ran a line. Just so I know where the center of everything is. And there's some adjustments that are required. But that's the way to go, string. It just reminds me of the hours and hours I did all that when I was laying out the actual house itself. I spent tons of time doing that. Over and over, rechecking. You get a one-shot deal. And to be honest with you, the house is still one inch wider. Down at that end, it's one inch wider. So even as a result, after all this time, when we put those roof pieces in, those, those trusses, each one has to be cut about an eighth of an inch different to make up for that mistake that I made two years ago but you know a 1500 square foot rectangle 
it's pretty big to be a one inch i still think i did pretty good but i use string and tape measure and squares kind of like the egyptians would uh, i didn't know about lasers at the time and all that so anyway it is what it is but it's a reminiscent uh thing to be working with string again and just digging in the dirt and spending hours doing just the most basic process digging some holes for some footings that are going to hold up posts they're going to hold up a deck this is going to take a lot of time and we haven't even started mixing the concrete which i'm going to do by hand eventually but just crazy here it is so i got the second one roughed in I think I'll start back over here now, out of the way. So at least we can drive a little, turn around in that area a little bit. I'll work on this big one here. Okay, here comes number three of the footings. This uh, earth here is rock solid. You can't even shovel it. It has to be chipped away. And the irony of it is, is that uh, like it's been dug up for the last two years. All this has been kind of backfilled. So uh, it's not like it's been sitting here forever. It's been sitting here for about a year, a year and a half or whatever since we backfilled a year. Yet I still have to chip it out. And each one of these takes, you know, two, three hours. And there's six. Grunt work. Okay, I got her. Now I gotta get some more wood and make some more boxes. And that'll be three down of the six. But that took about two and a half hours. Just on my knees in the rain with the crowbar and the shovel. <laughs> Good fun, eh? So I'm just uh, going to try to figure out how to make uh, boxes out of some of this leftover 5-8 tongue and groove plywood that I used to sheet the floors with. And we'll see how that goes. Because I don't really feel like going and buying a bunch of wood and chopping it up for this. So. Okay, that worked out pretty good using some old plywood and some old dunnage. It comes with the lifts when you uh, have it delivered. And, uh, you know, that's what it takes. This form material doesn't have to be pretty. It can be any kind of uh, material that holds concrete until it dries. And you rip it off and it's got all that concrete stuff on it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of goes through the ringer when you check out this pile of byproduct cutoffs that I have for the last two years of building a house. It's pretty big. Not all of it is uh, from the house. A piece of particle board and that round thing and some of these boards here are just some miscellaneous wood that needs to go but the majority of that wood there is all just cutoffs from the construction you know just little bits and bobs that you can't use there's a piece of a of a uh damn it floor joist but anyway I thought I'd give, show you that. Just show you what kind of byproduct you got off building a house. Okay, so since that seemed to work, I'm going to blast off a couple more with some uh, leftovers that I have from the floor. Might as well just kind of get a step ahead. That when I dig the holes, I can just drop the boxes in. I got everything set up here for it. So, Okay, so I pre-built the boxes that I'll need after all six holes are dug. And I'm going to start digging the fourth hole now really sorry about this content it's just uh youtube like you to constantly produce and uh, or the algorithm doesn't smile on you so just tough it out with me i'm digging in the dirt on a rainy day but i'm still in my tank top gotta like that watch me dig this for a bit peeps